Greetings, friends. Welcome to our circle. We continue our focused work, the meditation for the common good. Today, we're working with the energies of the Leo new moon. And as always, under the signs of the fixed cross, we focus on the theme of uh, principle uh, of sharing, introducing it into human affairs. And um, this cycle, our subjective support group precipitated the topic for us that sounds human and planetary purpose. Soul consciousness is a pathway to right sharing. We had a chance to invoke the vision of the plan in relation to the unfoldment of the principle of sharing at the last uh, full moon, uh, the, the day, first day of distribution, working with the energy of cancer. And throughout the last two weeks, we've been holding this topic in the focus. So today we have a chance to share in our circle again our impressions and uh, offer thought forms related to this topic to the group chalice that through our meditation we could magnetize those and radiate to humanity thank you for being part of this continuous journey and i ask Rebecca to remind us about the purpose of our work through our purpose of statement. So our purpose as we've defined it in this project which we've named meditation for the common good which encapsulates our purpose um, is to support the manifestation of the plan um, as best we can understand it through our group meditation, which is focusing group intention for the common good, attempting to bring spiritual laws and principles to life and try to understand them, and magnetizing our spirit saturated thought forms of solution for practical action and as alexander said we're working within the energies of leo um, where the individual emerges out of the mass consciousness of cancer and we meditated the first part of this question or our first meditation on this question in the full moon of cancer so now as we move into Leo, we avail ourselves of those energies, learning to give expression to the individuality and the unique qualities of each individual, sharing from the warmth of the heart and eventually sacrificing our matured personality within the light of the soul. And I was just reminded as I was reading in preparation today um, that Leo from the angle of the unfolding light represents the light of the soul itself. So we're contemplating sharing as a soul quality and we can tune into the reflected point of Legoic or divine light as the light diffused in cancer focuses and reveals eventually a point. So let us hold this influence and atmosphere of Leo, which we're working in, in mind as we come together today, beginning our group alignment through the naming circle. Over to Tracy to lead us through that process.
Thank you, Rebecca. Welcome, everyone. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Welcome, Alexander. Rebecca. Hello, this is Rebecca from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Daniela. Greetings, friends. Um, I'm calling in from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome. And uh, sorry, there was problems connection. This is Alexander calling from Walpole, New Hampshire. And Kathy calling from Walpole, New Hampshire. Welcome and thank you. And I am Ann Parker. I'm calling in from Venice Beach, California. Welcome. Aneta. This is Aneta Lufla from Denmark. Welcome. Barclay. Hello, everyone. This is Barclay Milne, and I'm calling from Querétaro, Mexico. Welcome. Carlos. Hello everyone, this is Darcy calling in from Washington DC area, USA. Welcome. Carlos. I apologize, I don't uh, see Carlos on the list. If you see uh, Tracy, okay. please unmute. Or maybe Daniela, you see his name. Uh, it says he's offline so maybe he stepped offline if he's with us welcome carlos dot dot maver calling in from new hampshire usa welcome fred And Fred has problems with the microphone. Okay, yeah, he's got his hand up, so. 
Welcome, Fred. Jillian. Hello all, uh, Jillian from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Hey. Hannah? I'm Hannah Thorauke Jensen, calling from Helsingør, Denmark. Welcome, Hannah. Helen. <laughs> uh, this is Helen. I'm ringing in from the uh, UK, from near London. Welcome. Jeffrey. This is Jeffrey Swainhart calling in from Minneapolis in the northern U.S. Welcome. John. John, please unmute yourself. Welcome, John. Chosat. Hello, I am Josette from French, near Strasbourg. Welcome. Kira. Kira may be having trouble too. I see her hand up, Alexander. Uh, I see her mic is on now, Kira. Are you Kira. Oh, was some, some issues. Yeah. Welcome, Kira. Lynn. Hello, um, I'm Lynn Green calling from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Martin. Hi, everyone. This is Martin calling in from Chateau, Belgium. Welcome. Maureen. Uh, this is Maureen Powers from Homer, Alaska. Welcome. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. I'm Ruth Dittmar calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Sheldon. Hello, friends. This is Sheldon calling in from Northern California. Welcome. And Tracy, I noticed there's a note from John Sedevi here saying that he can't unmute and he's joining from Missouri. Welcome, John, and thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, 
Let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Thank you, friends. We open now our group circle for sharing, visualizing the group chalice as a heart center of our group that receives all our impressions place where we focus our intention and through which we will radiate magnetized thought forms. The topic for our reflection this month is human and planetary purpose, soul consciousness as a pathway to right sharing. In the chats you can find the community impressions boards it's a space uh, that serves us as a um, place to share our impressions between the meetings and there are some uh, sharing already collected there so i invite you to check those and also reminding us about the questions that were offered to us during the uh, full moon meditation as a guidance for reflection. These are not, uh, in any case, binding questions. So, any thoughts that will help us in our process, please. We open in the floor. So, if you would like to share, raise your hand and you will be called to share.
Hello, it's Rebecca. I'll just start the conversation by bringing in some of the thoughts that we've um, discussed across the month. Um, and the first one um, was from a quote from DK um, pointing out that um, the principle of sharing is a soul quality. And so um, we've talked about the importance of connecting with our souls in order to be able to really come into true sharing. Um, another thought that was talked about was um, the importance of um, the freedom of choice um, in, in all <laughs> spiritual endeavours, but especially in sharing that it's, um, we talked about actually education and um, preschool and not forcing children to share, but um, allowing that space so that they learn um, to bring forward the will to share from themselves. Um, so both of those things seem very merged together in terms of that it, sharing is something that we have to really truly realise in ourselves. It can't be imposed by laws or regimes, it's a level of consciousness that we need to strive for. Yes, this is Tracy. Um, I was contemplating on the third question that was asked about how is striving for soul consciousness related uh, to the common good. And something that came to me, Rebecca just mentioned the principle of sharing is a soul quality, DK had told us. But I think that as we strive for soul, conscious, uh, soul connection and become soul conscious, um, I believe somewhere, I can't remember where I read it, but I don't know, I think it was DK that mentioned, it is one of the greatest services that we can do for humanity. And obviously if we are doing that as a great service to humanity, I think the domino effect falls onto the planet also. It's a great uh, service to be uh, to do this for the planet. So achieving the soul consciousness and uh, that in itself being a service to humanity and the planet, the more of us that become soul conscious, we become a larger group of us. And as we create this group of soul consciousness or soul conscious individuals, um, I think we start to have the same thoughts. We connect with our hearts and because soul consciousness is a heart type of quality also. And we begin working as a group through this um, even though we're individually soul conscious, it we start to congeal as a group with that. And I think the more uh, soul conscious uh, individuals there are, there's an increased group effort. So if there are any problems that need to be solved or anything, now you're working through this group soul consciousness as opposed to mass consciousness. And when you're working as a group so, group of soul conscious individuals, but as a group, I think then you start to apply the law of economy where things become, issues become easier to solve and that as you're working through that law of economy through the group work. So thank you.
in the book, um, The Compilation Serving Humanity, on page 463, um, DK says, the cycle now being inaugurated in the world is that of growth through sharing. An advanced humanity can now share the work, the responsibility, and trained reticence of the hierarchy while paralleling this and simultaneously. The mass of men are learning the lessons of economic sharing. And my brothers, in this lies the sole hope of the world. Every initiation to which disciples are admitted permits this closer, closer occult sharing in the hierarchical life. This involves, um, for advanced humanity, a noticeable increase in vitality and in, vi in vital tension and potency. Its reflection among the masses is shown in the constant demand for speed and in the enormous speeding up of the life of mankind in every department of living. This speeding up synchronizes with the increasing readiness of disciples everywhere for initiation according to their status and ability. The difference between the past and the present readiness lies in the fact that in the past, this readiness was a purely individual matter. Today, it is something which is closely related to a man's group and the individual aspect is of secondary importance. This is page 463 in uh, Serving Humanity. Thanks. <clears throat> Um, Jill here. Uh, the very act of joining a group is a way to share yourself because um, by doing so you're going to share ideas with others. And uh, at a lower level, I think people tend to sort of be still a little sheep-like to follow each other. And if a few people can be influenced to start sharing, Others will follow suit. Uh, there was something else, but I'm not on top form today and I can't think of it, so I'll come back if I think of it. Um, Rebecca, um, I also wanted to add in about the uh, preschool experience. Um, the children in that preschool we spoke of um, learned to share um, by being in situations that were very natural. Um, um, children um, that didn't want to share, just other children didn't want to play with, especially. so. Um, they eventually, well, very quickly learned that sharing was a good way to make friends and the kind of innate good in the children kind of blossomed forth um, because they wanted, they wanted to be part of friendships and play groups and um, in that sort of free play that um, did not allow violence or harm, but that allowed children just to 
to play together, naturally, um, it brought out that sharing uh, quality um, in a very easy, easy way after a short time. Thanks, Lynn. It's such a beautiful example. And um, what occurs to me is that um, you, we've spoken about the importance of, I guess, the radiance of um, individuals and groups connecting to soul and how important that is. And um, what strikes me is that in that preschool, an environment, <coughs> an environment was set up where um, the uh, ability to share it was drawn forth from people and maybe that's what we need to be thinking about how to bring more of that environment into the world at large. The teachers did a lot of work to set up that environment, you're right. Um, and it took, they had special phrases they used to um, um, keep the children thinking along a sort of a, the right lines. Uh, they had techniques and and uh, it, it, it really did take some work to set that up. Um, I tried to, to learn, I was a teacher, so I tried to learn from them how to do that and I had to really observe for quite a while because young children can be quite challenging. <laughs> um, but the, my, I think maybe my, my favorite part was um, when the two and a half year olds uh, reached out to hit, hit the person next to them that had the toy they wanted and grab it. Um, the teachers would just take that child in their arms, go over to the rocking chair, the child would be yelling and, you know, ah, I want that. And they would hold that child in their arms and rock them and say, just say, I can't let you do that. I can't let you do that. And, um, but we could uh, paint an, ang you could paint an angry picture or I could, I could write down for you your feelings. And um, how mad are you? Let's write this down. Uh, ways to encourage self-expression. Um, um, but the, as soon as the child was ready to go back to play again, you know, and they weren't, uh, they weren't yelling and screaming and kicking and, and weren't, uh, trying to grab the toys, they let them down there to play again, you know, on the floor or in the, whatever activities were going on. It was a beautiful thing to see. This there was a book written about it. I'm sorry. I was just going to say there's a book written about it, and I'll put that in the uh, chat box at some point. Beautiful. Thank you. This is Hannah speaking. Uh, I think um, I've just uh, come to know about uh, the, the importance of breathing breathing properly and a man uh, i think he's from england has written a book i think it was in 2008 because he helped his son who suffered from i think it was a d uh, a d h d i don't know what it's called in english but i can put um uh, I can put in the chat uh, uh, um, a website to see a short film because I think it can help uh, very much uh, children and grown-ups to stay calm or to get get calm, become calm, and uh, when you become calm, you can easier also, I think get in touch with your soul. 
So I'll put it in the chat and you can watch the video later. Uh, it's ADHD or ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Yes. I think that's what you were speaking yes, about. Yes. yes, exactly. Yes, thank you. And it really, everything that's being said, it really points to the need for us to bring ourselves into a place of um, equilibrium and centeredness to be able to share, to feel safe and be able to share well. So um, it's part of our discipleship work, but something that can be shared with all people who are um, suffering from different imbalances and um, the, the astral imbalance that's so prevalent in our world um, now. Yeah, I think that's really important right now because of the increased population. And when you think about the astral body of uh, of humanity and the astral body of our planet, um, there is an increased added pressure right now because of the increased population. And I think that's an excellent point that everybody has been bringing up that we need to, one of the things that humanity needs to do is learn how to deal with their anger and frustration because there is so much frustration, I think, going on right now throughout the world um, because we feel helpless. And I think teaching people how to go from feeling and being, you know, in that state of helplessness to empowerment. How can you, how can we empower the children? How can we empower adults, especially young adults right now who are going through so much right now? The little children are just learning, but these young adults are the ones, the highest suicide rate and everything. I mean, so I think finding that safe space um, and trying to help um, find a release valve, so to speak, for all the pressure that's being placed on this astral body of humanity right now is really important. Opening up the pressure valve, you know, kind of like a pressure cooker, right? You know, so just having that release valve. Yes, I think we need to be aware that when we, we share and encourage sharing, it, it isn't always just the good that is shared, is it? I think the anxiety in uh, lots of people ask, ask me for healing they, for for anxiety but the, the, the anxiety in the world is shared and I think this is something we, we need to be aware of in, in sharing that people pick up everything which is why it is so important that we are sharing that so group consciousness all the time as much as we possibly can to be radiating that consciousness so that can be shared with humanity to to counterbalance all these other things that are are going on and, and we know that the more the light shines the more the dirt shows up, so to speak. So I just think we need to be very careful in keeping a balance and be aware that both sides come up to be looked at.
I also just wanted to say that I think the soul consciousness that that awareness of the the oneness of the group at soul level is right human relations. I think that's where that actually is at that soul conscious level. I see Jeffrey Swainhart has his hand up. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, um, getting uh, to share, to sharing is a uh, demonstration of the conquering of fear. That if you are no longer afraid of lack of your position of loss of time of uh, putting yourself out there then there's a greater tendency to share um it uh is wound up with the the Buddhist hindrances of attachment and aversion. And uh, I guess the third is delusion, which is the, the, the idea that we are separate beings and that rather than the fact that we are all a part of one, divine expression. We come at it, we approach our lives from that divine space, from that soul-infused space, then the sharing is natural. We have uh, All of us work with our habitual minds, our habitual approach, and breaking through those habits, that, that sense of uh, sense of separate self, that sense that you that a sense of mortality, that there's a limit. Those all work against what should be natural, which is the open sharing and giving. The whole um, the whole of life as you know aspirants and disciples work on their own selves the average folks getting by it's all a part of our spiritual development as one humanity and those with maybe a little broader perspective can really help the situation by sharing more, 
by sharing not only materially, but our thoughts, our hearts. I mean, what else is there to do? Thanks. The uh, Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham demonstrates a lot of sharing. I mean, apart from the athlete, athletes coming, the Commonwealth is gradually dwindling as uh, nations want to drop break away. But uh, the ones that come are so full of enthusiasm. And I'm not uh, particularly a sports fan, but I've been watching the, the footage on the television and there seems to be so much happiness there. And there are so many people that volunteer to just go and show people around and help people out. And uh, they're all sharing in quite a big way. Thank you. There's definitely um, relation between soul consciousness and natural unfoldment of the tendency to share and recognition of sharing as the law. And we know that the spectrum of this consciousness development, of soul consciousness development in humanity, it's pretty wide. And uh, as more and more people who awaken to the soul reality, the uh, principle of sharing becomes more and more becomes a norm and yet it's not in my sense we're just approaching to that what is we can call the critical mass if we think humanity as a whole together and uh, yeah, Tracy mentioned about the increasing uh, population of the planet and so as more and more people become soul consciousness, there is still more and more new souls arriving to incarnation who are still uh, in a way behind the, uh, with the evolution of consciousness. And so this balance of critical mass of soul consciousness in humanity is always kind of this on, on the edge. And so that brings, puts more responsibility to those of us who live already as a uh, as a soul and uh, leave uh, the, the principle of sharing through own life as a foundation of life and uh, yeah in in a way the the what we call the new group of world service and uh, people who awaken to their soul consciousness, they carry that burden of responsibility for all. And uh, yes, we are forerunners, not just in terms of uh, heralding the new age, but actually shifting that critical balance and uh, sh showing the hierarchy that yes humanity has the hope has hope and uh, it is on us thank you
Thank you. And one more thing I wanted to add. Um, I think it's uh, somewhere in the first pages of the um, letters of occult meditation, where um, Tibetan says that, um, among other among factors, factors, one of the of uh, a way for the awakening of the soul of uh, uh, consciousness is the. Uh, uh crisis that pushes uh individuals and groups and humanity as a whole towards opening of the soul consciousness and that's what we are observing now the most uh, serious condition that society lives through the the more intense push towards the uh all sorts of volunteer activities and towards sharing. And as an example of that, I, I, I can offer that what I hear, heard and keep hearing many, uh, many stories coming from Ukraine as the war began, uh, the intensity of, the, of everything, and the, but also intensity of the subjective experiences that people live through uh always been on the edge of life and death uh, the uh strive to help others became the most prevalent like reality it's something that everyone says that it's this just this energy that you experience for you, you the, of the pressure that you experience within it's like in a pressure cooker the 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 way to kind of normalize your balance your inner balance to start doing something helping others finding something to, to to finding those who even in the worst condition and trying to help them so yes crisis is a is a, is a uh, will help us all Yeah, and I'd like to add one more thing to that, the word hope. I think that that is probably the key word right now for everything that's going on in the world. That's the uh, pressure release valve is hope. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like to add too that we we spoke mm -hmm. about this is Lynn. We spoke about um, all the pressure from additional population and all the people coming in, but we also have all of that pressure that we're all aware of from the hierarchy in Shambhala, all that energy that's being poured in right now uh, to the earth. And um, I, I know I have a, a good friend who's um, actually an intellectual. Uh, has never been interested in spirituality, um, but he is uh, actually having a crisis right now, a mental health crisis. Uh, and I think um, I tried once to suggest to him that it might have to do with all this uh, spiritual energy. And I'm, I'm not sure that he appreciates that yet, but uh, um, that certainly is having a big effect. And I think it, again, it has a big effect, effect on the emotional life. So um, I, I'm encouraged by all of the uh, emotional education that has been going on for a while and continues in education and emphasis on handling emotion well, well in education, but also in um, 
in business. Um, I know my brother had to take classes as a manager in a car dealership to uh, in, in dealing with customers and it had really was an emotional education for him. Uh, it was a quality program that he was involved in. And um, he learned a great deal about um, relationship um, among people from that class. I know businesses all over are doing that sort of training um, that it trains the emotions in the mind, which I think is very encouraging um, for us all, because I think that emotional training is and mental training there, even though it's geared to um, worldly issues, um, brings us closer. And, and if, if you think I'm wrong, please say so. But I think that that brings us closer to, uh, to the ability to touch in to our higher self and our, our soul life. Um, thanks. And then, uh, please, I, you can build. Oh, sorry, Julian. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I was just uh, going to say that I think people on the whole just need to be pushed to the brink before they actually react. Um, as uh, you were saying, Alexandra, about the people in Ukraine, uh, they're pushed to the limit and they've turned to good which is a good sign and I think that often happens and it's the same in the Second World War people and ended up realising that they had to stand up for what was right. So I'm wondering if this uh, climate crisis etc that's going on at the moment is superior beings ways of pushing us to the limit to try and get a good reaction from us. I just would like to share to follow up on the idea of hope, offering hope. I think also in these times when perhaps people can envision things being worse than they ever imagined, it's important if we can to offer a vision of how wonderful or at least the very minimum improved they can be and will be. I think not everyone can envision positivity and a new, the new age, let's say, as well as others. So whether it's through conversation or art, and obviously through our meditations, but on top of the hope, if any means we can to offer a vision is important right now. Thank you. That's really important, and so thank you for bringing that up. And I, I can't help but indulge in this uh, <laughs> and say, I don't know if anybody is a Doctor Who fan, uh, but there was an episode where they had to make a change in the world, and it had to be um, everybody had to be on board with it. And what it was was they all decided to have one line. They said at the exact same time in the whole world and everybody in the world was focused on that one specific word or uh, sentence they were going to say at an exact time and it completely changed the whole world for the better it was like one they were all in unison all of humanity was in unison and i can't remember what it was for or about but again like what you said Anne. 
you know, if we give a positive vision or say hopeful words to people. I think people, they're hearing so much negative and seeing so much negative that beauty, we're, we're missing so much beauty in our world right now um, because of everything seems so dark. So, you know, the lack of light, we need to bring light to those things that are beautiful and, and worth living for and worth striving for, I think, as, uh, as Jillian said, pushing, you know, they, we're being pushed to the limits and Alexander mentioned with the Ukraine. Thank you for allowing me that indulgence. I read something and I'll get half the story right and half of it wrong, so feel free to correct me. But it was something, um, I think, in the Second World War or just before or just after. And Poland, Poland was, uh, I think, annexed or something by, by the communists. And um, the Pope went there and he had a huge crowd there to see him. And at some point, the crowd just started to chant in unison a phrase similar to what you were saying, Tracy. And I think it went on for about a quarter of an hour. They just chanted over and over again, we want God. And uh, at, within a few weeks, I think it was, um, they were freed again, as far as I remember, if that's totally correct. It might have a few discrepancies, but that's the overall theme of it. Kathy here just yeah. corrected <laughs> that, uh, not corrected, but added that it was during the 80s and it was uh, Pope John Paul, yeah. Uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. Not too far out, <laughs> thanks. I'm still pondering the depth of what um, Helen brought forward for us about, um, you know, how we share um, all aspects of the astral and etheric life that are in play um, with humanity. And um, that's bringing up a few thoughts. Um, just the idea that um when we oh, well the idea that helen expressed so that um when we um tread the path of discipleship um all that's good and all that is not good comes up i think that's Lebatsky said that idea in better words but um so it, it's part of the work of the world disciple as bows and the individual disciples to do this work of um, seeing what comes up and um, purifying um, the things in ourselves, the fear in ourselves. And because of this connection that Helen pointed out, when we do that, we help the whole. Um, so that seems really important. And um, another force that seems really important to help the whole situation of humanity and um, be able to create that environment for sharing is the force of moral power. Um, and I recently heard that um, talked about um, in an um, interview that I saw, and I can't remember the guy's name, the last name is, his first name was Matthias, and he's written a book about mass formation and the um, sort of, I won't go into that, but um, he was recounting from Dostoevsky's uh, writing a story of prisoners in gulags in Russia um, and the terrible conditions and the degeneration of the social instinct in those 
or the social impulse to an instinctual level in those contexts where people, there was so little food and people would just turn into kind of their animal nature and fighting for food um, and everything for their survival. Um, and he spoke about how there were just a very small proportion of prisoners who refused to try and take other people's food and um, just kept to their moral compass. And he spoke about how in general, the effect for those people was that they became stronger in themselves and um, not all came um, but most of them also survived. Um, so I think that's a really um, strong example of the work that we can do to bring strength into the world and to um, help the situation overall. There is a comment um, in the chat uh, from John. Uh, I will read it. There is reference within the dictations of the ascended Master Saint Germain of a spontaneous sharing of the heart flame with others. This occurs when one has achieved sufficient balance of love, wisdom, and power within the heart and the sufficient attainment of the seventh ray aspect or violet flame. The spontaneous sharing within oneself ignites the dormant heart flame of others. The impact radius depends upon the degree." End quote. It's quite rich sharing today and um, considering time uh, um, we definitely approaching time for the meditation and the way our meditation is structured during the new moon is that we align invoking the available astrological energies and uh, then there is a uh, period after a period of silence each of us has an opportunity to offer a thought form putting it into the group chalice not like every, uh, everybody has to do it, but the, like if you have anything to offer, just please unmute yourself and voice it. And uh, after that, let's hold a, a short silence to let that thought form to get magnetized within the flame of the group heart. And then the next person would go. And after that, we will lift the chalice with all the offered thought forms and we will radiate it with a guided meditation to humanity. So before we, uh, yes, Rebecca, you wanted to add something? No, I. I just realized that I was probably supposed to be <laughs> saying that and um, oh, I just, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I just wanted to, I was just going to offer um, just to say that um, at this point we'll take some silence to 
reflect on what's happened and um, allow some seed thoughts to come together, which can then be later offered into the meditation, which you will lead us in when you're ready. Is that right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Yeah, so yes, so let us yeah. just a couple of minutes of silence, uh, allowing our thoughts to form and then we'll start the meditation. We recognize our presence as a group, our group circle as a point of light within the network of planetary grid of light. We stand together as a part of the World Service Group, recognizing our unity with the wider group. We recognize World Service Group, the Ajna Center of the planet. We recognize and accept the unique position of mediatorship between humanity and spiritual hierarchy. The throat and heart centers of the planet.
we see the radiance of the triangle of these three great centers. We lift our group eyes towards the energies of the sign of Leo, invoking its potency and quality. We bring our focus to the group hearts, group chalice, firing up the flame of group love and group potency with the energy of Leo. Planetary and human purpose. Soul consciousness as a pathway to right sharing. And now we, one by one, taking turns to offer thought forms, seeds that could inspire humanity and lead it towards the future with the new civilization based on principles of common good, freedom, and brotherhood. Oh. Annette, can you please repeat? We couldn't hear you. 
Nope. Realizing the beautiful and synthetic unfolding of the divine plan. I am that and that am I. Sharing is an expression of unreserved love. The sun rules Leo on all levels. The sun is a brilliant demonstration of sharing. Practicing harmlessness is a way to um, connect with our souls, to bring about right relationship, and um, leads to um, a better quality of sharing. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Anna, can you repeat, please? Love thy neighbor as thyself. From soul, consciousness. So, from soul consciousness comes divine indifference and loving understanding for what right human relationship. Sharing will lead to trust and then to peace. We joyfully share group consciousness for the common good. There is a message from John that says spontaneous sharing. We all share in the reaping and sowing of humanity's destiny. We strive for loving equanimity to lift us up.
The energies now offered by Leo assist in awakening the children of the sun to know thyself. And the ripple effect transforms fear into love and the joy of right sharing is the result. Sharing open doors of opportunity. With focused intention, we hold the group chalice filled with the radiance of seeds. We visualize the light of Leo the will to good magnetizing the seeds increasing its radiance and magnetism As we hold the visualization of the triangle of the hierarchy, group of all service and humanity, we silently sound OM, visualizing the radiance of the thought forms that will lead humanity to right sharing.
from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Thank you. So we continue our work. And in in a week or so, uh, subjective support group, custodians of purpose group will gather again to reflect and share together, precipitating ideas and the topic ideas for the topic for the next cycle as we will be working with energy of leo virgo if you're interested to join that meeting please let us know and um, anyone is welcome much love <laughs>